This is LXPN TV, and I'm Colin O'Keefe. When news of the NSA's PRISM scandal first broke, and we heard that the government had server-level access to tech companies' data along with the metadata for phone records, one of the first questions asked was, how is this even legal? Well, certain groups have backed up that question with litigation. Joining me now from Washington, D.C. to discuss the challenges to the PRISM program is Dana Fricks. He is chair of Chadbourne and Parks Telecom Media and Technology Practice, and he is editor of the firm's blog, TMT Perspectives. Dana, first, the PRISM program obviously raises many civil rights concerns, but can you explain to me uh, the challenges that have been brought forth thus far? Sure, I'd be happy to, Colin. Thanks. Um, the the case that was brought uh, was brought in April of this year, uh, and uh, we originally wrote a blog post on this because what we wanted to do was make sure that the contours of the lawsuit was pretty clear. I found that the public um, press on this was fairly unclear, and therefore people really did not have a chance to understand what uh, knowledge exists today and what knowledge doesn't exist today. So um, the the lawsuit that was filed was first Unitarian Church of Los Angeles versus the NSA. And it was ch it was filed uh, because one uh, two-page order from the FISA court was publicly released. And that two-page order said essentially that the FISA court had authorized telephone companies to have mm -hmm. access to the metadata of the of telephone users. And by that I mean the ability to uh, the 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 uh, government had the ability to access uh, data about what calls were being made, how long calls were being made, from what number to what number. And I want to be clear, this is not the government uh, intercepting your call or listening in on your call, but nonetheless still have access to knowing who you, Colin, called over the last five or ten years. Uh, the, and the group of plaintiffs found that the government's possession of that kind of information was really a chilling, uh, uh, was chilling for democracy. And therefore a collection, uh, a, a fairly unusual collection of plaintiffs came together. Church groups, gun groups, uh, uh, good government groups, uh, religious uh, organizations of the right and the left, uh, a variety of entities that said, uh, geez, we have constituents who are concerned that the government looking over our shoulder uh, could infringe upon our ability to associate. And so uh, the court, uh, the plaintiffs filed a complaint that said essentially your, the government's ability to have all of this data about who we are calling and who we are associating with violates three provisions of our Constitution. The First Amendment, the Fourth Amendment, and the Fifth Amendment. And essentially those provisions are uh, the First Amendment a right uh, to associate without the government being involved with who we are associating with. The Fourth Amendment is the right to be free from unreasonable searches and seizures. And the Fifth Amendment uh, is the uh, right to due process generally. So essentially all that exists right now is a two-page FISA court order and a lot of concerns by this uh, varied group of good government uh, entities. And what they are doing is bringing the lawsuit because they are saying, we don't understand what else the government may be doing here. But what little we know right now appears to be deeply problematic for our form of democratic government. I see. So second, the PRISM program and the legal proceedings that allow it to exist are obviously uh, shrouded in secrecy. With that being a key factor, is it likely anyone is able to successfully challenge the program and its far-reaching scope? Well, I'm an optimist, so I think the answer is uh, it's quite possible that there could be a, a challenge that will be meaningful. Uh, the lawsuit itself is brought not at the FISA court, but in a northern, uh, but in a federal district court in California, in the Northern District of California. Um, there are substantial problems uh, here. Uh, the majority of information that the plaintiffs will be seeking uh, is at this point uh, not released publicly and the government will be making very, very strong claims that it should not be released under any circumstances in this lawsuit. Uh, and regrettably, the history in the last 10 years is that the, uh, is that the court system has taken those government requests very seriously. Uh, but a little bit of time has passed now since 9-11, and it is my hope uh, that perhaps uh, the reasonableness of the lawsuit 
and the diverse nature of the plaintiffs will uh, suggest to the court that this is indeed something that uh, is a reasonable inquiry by reasonable people under our form of democratic government. Absolutely. This is going to be a fascinating area to watch. Maybe the most interesting topic going uh, in the legal world right now is I'm sure this isn't the last challenge we will see regarding the NSA's PRISM program. Uh, once again, that was Dana Fricks of Chadbourne and Park. For more of his insight on the PRISM program and other issues associated with it, be sure to visit tmtperspectives.com. And of course, if you're not already watching us here on LXPN, be sure to visit the new look, lxpn.com, where you can find curated commentary from Lux Plug Network's more than 8,000 members, along with hundreds of these video interviews and even a section dedicated specifically to the NSA PRISM program. Well, thank you for joining me today, Dana. Thanks, Colin.